Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and thank you for coming to my talk on the Svalbard Global Seaboard. Now, I guess you're wondering why I want to talk to you about Svalbard, a place name you may never have heard of before. It's actually because I'm going to spend there my New Year's Eve holidays. Yes, I oh know, I am. And uh, the fact is that I wanted to know a little bit more about um, sightseeing in Svalbard. And that is how I came across this YouTube video on the Svalbard Global Sea Ball. And uh, whence the topic for my speech tonight. Um, so, if you've never heard about Svalbard, it's also known as Spitsbergen in some uh, languages. It is um, about uh, 1300 kilometers from the North Pole, around 800 miles. And uh, the main city there is Longyearbyen. And so, the city of Longyear is actually the place where, uh, well, not very far from it, where the Global Seed Vault is found. The Global Seed Vault actually is the world's biggest freezer. Uh, some say it's also the most important one. Uh, well, uh, what is it exactly? Well, it is a place that has been built on the side of a mountain, so that even if all sea ice melts, it still won't sink, it won't be uh, below sea level. It is, um, has been built so that it should be still on Earth maybe 200 years from now. It should withstand earthquakes and uh, explosions, even nuclear bombs. And uh, as I was saying, it's uh, built. It has been built on the side of the mountain, and um, underneath, uh, inside of this mountain, there are three vaults, and only one of those uh, is actually in use. The second one, and it is uh, found at about 120 meters below the front door. Uh, which is the only part of the seed vault that you can actually see when you arrive at the, at the location of the Svalbard Global Sea Vault. And why, I'm sure you're wondering, uh, should it be 120 meters below uh, this, uh, the entrance of, of the seed vault? Uh, well, it is because um, it has been built in a... Um, in a part uh, of the geological layers of our planet, which is called the permafrost, where the uh, year-long temperatures, the average temperatures, are uh, around minus four to minus five degrees Celsius. And um, this means that even if there were some kind of a problem with the, the power or the coolant, so power failures or problems with the, the coolant that maintain the, the, the cold temperatures in the vault, still the average temperature shouldn't go much above minus four, minus five degrees Celsius forever. Well, this is of course uh, something uh, that people thought before the current trends in global climate change became apparent, so we don't really know for sure whether it will uh, be truly the case uh, later on, but this is a topic for another talk. Now the Svalbard Global Seed Vault is also known as the Doomsday Vault, and now we are coming to actually the uh, main part of my, uh, of my topic, so uh, the purpose of the seed vault is to preserve the diversity of food crops on Earth. And um, as I was saying, uh, there are three vaults, a little bit like bank vaults inside uh, this, uh, uh, this Svalbard Global Sea Vault, but only one of them is currently uh, in use, the second one, number two. 
and there is a very intricate uh, system of tunnels which I won't walk you through, but at the end of the longest tunnel, at about 120 meters below uh, the entrance of the Global Seed Vault, uh, you can find these uh, three vaults in vault number two, and all of them uh, have a temperature of minus 18 degrees Celsius, uh, which is being maintained thanks to the coolant I was talking to, uh, talking about earlier uh, to you. And um, what's interesting about uh, these vaults is that, um, well, I already mentioned it, they're really like bank vaults. On, you, you, only the depositor can actually access the contents of the boxes that they deposit. And these boxes, of course, go all kinds of seeds and uh, of different food crops. And, uh, well, one might wonder how actually um, the people running the place know what's inside the boxes. Well, the short answer to that is that they don't. I mean, the only thing, the only guarantee that they have that uh, those boxes actually contain seeds of food crops uh, around the world is the contract that uh, the Norwegian government asks those depositors to sign. And that's how we know, we hope, that uh, the depositors haven't introduced any illegal substances such as marijuana, for instance, or genetically modified uh, crops, because those are prohibited by, by the contract that everyone, I mean, everyone, everyone who would like to, to make a deposit in the Global Seed Vault has to sign. So it's basically a question of trust. Uh, we might also wonder, and I for one did wonder, whether there are some kind of unusual or odd crops that have been deposited in those boxes. And it would seem that uh, that sh shouldn't really be the case, with the caveat I was uh, I've been just talking about, that we don't really have access to the contents of the boxes. But there have been some very odd requests for deposits and, um, at the Global Seed Vault. Uh, uh, one type of, of, of request has got to do with uh, people wanting to send to the Global Seed Vault their personal, like, private kind of seeds they have developed at their homes. And uh, I think that uh, uh, it's, uh, yeah, uh, children have already gone to bed, so I can also talk about the other kind of very odd request that engineers at the Global Seed Vault have received. Um, uh, well, this one uh, comes from men wanting to deposit their genetic material. And, of course, the engineers at the Global Seed Vault have never really given uh, suit to this kind of, uh, of requests. Well, uh, moving now to uh, the more uh, serious part of what's in those boxes, uh, well, we uh, already uh, talked about uh, the seeds, the, the, the purpose being to preserve the diversity of the food crops on Earth, and uh, this means that all countries uh, have actually contributed to this uh, global seed vault. And one of those countries, and incidentally, one of the most interesting, interesting boxes at the global seed vault is North Korea. It's not North Korean boxes with North Korean food crops. Why is that? Well, uh, believe it or not, uh, North Korea was the only country which, back in the 1960s maybe, uh, asked for the precise measurements of the shelves on which the boxes are deposited. And so, North Koreans' boxes are custom-made, and they are made from North Korean wood, so they actually have much more value than the other ones. They have this quaint look to them, because if you watch the video you'll see that most of the other boxes really don't have anything very much exciting about them, but these ones are really original and they fit perfectly in the shelves. And uh, another fun fact uh, is that they are just next to the US ones and not very far from the South Korean ones, which means that at that place, at the Global Seed Vault in Svalbard, at least, these three countries don't seem to have any trouble sharing uh, a common uh, ground. Now, as I was saying, only the second vault is currently being uh, used, but uh, ultimately the three of them will be filled with uh, uh, different uh, specimens of plants, seeds and so on. And so when the three vaults have actually been used to the f f 
full of their capacity, we will be talking about uh, somewhere around 3 million different plant species and um, with more than 500 seeds per sample and in, in total uh, and overall we'll have more than 1 billion seeds which will actually uh, account for most of the diversity of food crops on earth. Now, you might be wondering what the cost of building this uh, seed vault has been, and I'll give it to you right away. We are talking about 9 million US dollars. Uh, well, but this is just the cost for building it, not for actually maintaining the equipment uh, year after year, which also uh, represents millions of dollars. So, a legitimate question to my mind would be, is it worth the investment? Is it worth the effort? Uh, what's the cost efficiency and value-based evaluation of this global uh, seed vault? Well, uh, you should uh, also know that uh, the global seed vault it's found out, is not the only seed bank in the world. There are actually around 1,700 gene banks uh, all over the world. So why have this one in particular, which seems to be far more maybe expensive than the other ones? Um, well, you could actually, and this brings us back to our dire uh, current uh, situation, world situation, uh, uh, we could actually ask the Syrians, because the Syrians would tell you that they are very much happy about having thought of sending uh, some uh, seeds, uh, seed samples to the uh, Svalbard Global Seed Vault uh, before the war in Syria began because there is, one of the 1700 seed banks I was talking about earlier uh, was in Aleppo and uh, unfortunately because of the war it was destroyed. So recently um, Syrian scientists asked for about one third of the deposit they had made and the global seed vault in Svalbard, so that they'd be able to uh, continue uh, studying uh, uh, the, the, the food crops they were studying back at Aleppo, and also for replanting uh, some of them. And uh, they're doing this, of course, not in Syria, in Aleppo, but in Morocco and uh, Lebanon. So uh, there we go. You, you see what the use of those seeds might be. And, Another use we have for the global seed vault in Svalbard is that um, due to climate change, which I mentioned earlier, we're not really sure what the climate uh, would be like in 30 or 40 years from now. And we can't really know for sure whether the conditions in which uh, uh, seeds and plants could be planted then would be the same as, as nowadays. So it would be uh, interesting to have uh, some extra samples which can actually uh, be uh, replanted under these new conditions. Well, uh, a short, uh, uh, maybe throwback in, in a way, uh, over the last 13,000 years, uh, mankind has cultivated millions of different species of plants, and actually they are the reason why we got the uh, agricultural revolution, which, which is also the basis of our enormous technological uh, progress and the, those advances, um, the way that technology advanced, uh, also brought about the uh, very important population increase. And uh, that is what made modern life basically possible. So um, even if it is true that the doomsday scenario, you wouldn't remember at this point in my talk that uh, Svalbard's global seed vault is also known as the doomsday vault. Even if it's true that the risk for a doomsday is maybe quite remote, uh, we still would be, I think, very happy to have this backup that the global seed vault in Svalbard represents for our future generations uh, when they will need to plant seeds, plants, food crops and live on them. Thank you very much for your attention.